a series circuit is set up like this. You have flow coming from the power supply, which should be on three volts for this lab, and it's coming from the red terminal. That's the positive terminal. Ignore the color of the, the wires. The wires are just wires, and it's going through through the first resistor. One path has to go through that first resistor, through the second resistor, one path still through the third resistor, coming back to the power supply. To measure the voltage around the battery, what's coming from the battery, we're looking at the entire circuit. Set the multimeter on direct current. That's the solid line and the dotted line underneath it. Voltage, have the black cord lead into the COM port, red lead into the side that says V for voltage. And when you measure this, what you're going to have to do is touch You pretty much have to find the lead closest to the negative terminal of the battery and the other side closest to the positive terminal of the battery. So before it ever it goes through any sort of resistor, and right there I'm touching both parts on the, the, the side closest to the power supply. And when I do that, I'm going to get a read for the overall voltage provided at, from the battery. Figure out voltage at each resistor. Once again, have it set up right on direct current voltage. The right red lead into the voltage part, and all you do is touch either side of the resistor, and then you can get your reading off of that. So you would just do that all the way around, touch those either side, get your reading, and so forth. To determine current. What you need to do is change the red port, red lead, put it into the amps for amps of, of current. Switch this to direct current amps. And for current, you need to actually have electrons flowing through the multimeter. So you do this a special way. You just go ahead and open up the circuit, and you are going to have current. Current now has to run through the multimeter, and I'm actually using the multimeter to complete the circuit, and I'm going to get my reading off of that. But it's hard to see what's happening here is current going from the positive terminal into the multimeter, from the multimeter back into the resistor, and now I just measured current provided in the lead before it hit the first resistor. And in series, that's going to tell me really a lot. It's going to tell me what came from the power supply, what's going into that first resistor, and then it's going to tell me actually what's going all the way around because there's only one path. The parallel circuit we have to set up on the lab sheet consists of a single black resistor, a double red resistor, and a green resistor over here. Now, with the parallel circuit, you have to turn on the power supply and it should be around 3 volts. You turn this knob to increase the voltage, don't don't increase it beyond 3, stick to around 3 volts. And then looking at the actual current coming from the power supply, it's coming from this red terminal and it doesn't matter the color of the wires, they're just wires coming from the red terminal going over here. At this point, it can branch through the black resistor or it could keep on going branch through the red resistor, or keep on going into the last branch, which ends up being the green resistor. To use the multimeter to measure voltage, you should have the setting on direct current voltage. That's the symbol right here, a straight line and the dotted line underneath it. The red lead should be coming out of the voltage part. Um, black will always stay on COM port. And what we actually we do is we measure the voltage drop at different locations. For the resistor, it's pretty simple. All we do is take your two leads coming from the multimeter, and you just touch either side of that resistor, and you're going to detect the voltage drop at that resistor. Now, that voltage drop, sometimes you'll see a negative. That just means that you had the leads backwards. I would, rather than doing this, just go ahead and make it a positive value. 
Um, so if you ever see a negative value, just make it a positive value. So that's how you detect voltage, voltage at the resistor. Now to detect it at the battery, you need to, one way would be to go over here, which I don't want you to do. Um, you want to find the leads coming from the battery, the positive and negative terminal of the battery, and you want to touch the alligator clips at the positive and negative terminals of the batteries before, before any resistors have been reached, and that will give you an overall. It's hard for me to do this video one-handed, so um, if you do it correctly, just touch the alligator clips on the closest to the positive and negative terminal of the power supply, and you'll get some sort of voltage reading, and that's going to be the reading for that power supply itself. To measure current in the circuit, you actually have to have current flowing through the multimeter for the detection. Uh, change the red lead, put it in the A for amps of current, turn this to direct current amps of current. So that's once again the straight line dotted line. And you're going to have to open the circuit. So this would be, I'm taking the wire closest, it doesn't matter if it's the red or the black, it doesn't matter if it's the positive or negative terminal, but the wire is coming from the power supply. At this point in time, it's branching. I'm going to take it before the branch. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm connecting one end to the black lead and one end to the point where the first resistor would be. And at that point, what I'm detecting is I'm detecting the current in the line coming from the power supply before it hits that first resistor. To detect the current in that first resistor, what I'll have to do is I'll have to open, open the circuit and I need to actually make the multimeter part of that first branch. And so right now what's going to happen is that current is going to flow from the power supply. What it's doing is it's coming over here. At that point in time it's flowing into the multimeter and back from the multimeter through that resistor and, it's, and I'm detecting the resistance in that branch at that point. You do the same thing for the next two resistors as well.